absolutely beautiful Aquarian friends and welcome to your horoscope, your final horoscope, by the way. <laughs> I can't even believe this. Of 2022, your December horoscope, where this month, Aquarius, not only are we wrapping up the year, but we are wrapping up a whole set of lessons and transitions for you for sure. Now, right here at the beginning of the video, I want to call your attention back to the beginning of January 2022, okay? Right there, we're coming in with a very strong Capricorn signature that we talked about in the annual 2022 horoscope video. So if you haven't watched that, please check it out. And we're also going to see that same signature as we're coming into 2023. So also check out your annual 2023 videos, but it refreshes right here in December. You were working on and revaluing with Venus retrograde in Capricorn at the beginning of 2022. Relationships got changed, financial things got changed, what you valued, how you valued yourself, who you valued and who you valued to travel with you that could have long-term sustainable success and achievement. You know, the passage of time was changing for you. Maybe you were moving from being just the, the brother, the husband, to being the grandfather. Like, what was the changing of time and passage that also allowed you a new position? I really want to hear from you. What did it look like in the beginning of 2022? Because now we're lighting up for a review, a refresh, maybe even a little bit of a celebration and certainly a welcoming home of everything you have learned in this last year. Not to mention this is the time where we start to send your Aquarian energy home and in to rest, to renew, to grieve, to transition, to culminate, all of the things that you have learned in this last year as you get ready for birthday time and your next annual year. So what a big month to be looking back with gratitude, reflection, honesty, and to see the changes that have come to you and through you, my Aquarian friends. So let's jump in here and see what's going on. Right at the beginning of the month on the third, we're going to see Neptune come out of retrograde, come direct at 22 degrees of Pisces. Now this lights up your second house space, okay? So this is about income for you. Income, how you make money, your self-worth. Um, it's also about your possessions. And don't think about possessions like, oh, my house or my car. It's the things inside of that house or the things inside of that car, right? What are the things that you have that are of value, maybe an asset to you in some way, shape, or form, okay? So you have really had this opportunity with Neptune here to have a revaluing truly of money. Because when Neptune is direct, Neptune is the dream, it is the vision, okay? It's an ideal that you have for yourself that you're inspired by, you wanna move towards. It has some piece of, of, of longing that is attached to it for you, but it's intangible. We create that in an intangible space, so it's just the vision. And then when Neptune went retrograde in June, what happens is the rose colored glasses are lifted, that veil is lifted and we go, oh wait, is this what I really value around money? Am I really inspired to have money, earn money this way? What, whoa, is that really what I think of my self worth? And you really have this time to go back over what you think, what you believe, what you've had faith in for a very long time. And you maybe find out that those belief structures, that vision, that ideal does not work for you anymore. It's also just Neptunian energy. So if you've been being weird with your money, and by being weird, I mean, have you been spending money that you don't have? Have you been somehow fiscally irresponsible with your money in some way? Or have you been holding on to a dream and a vision that having an abundant um, financial life is something that you cannot have. This has been a time of re-envisioning that and getting clear on some things that can happen in order to put you in alignment with that, okay? Now, as Neptune is coming direct, you have had a solid time of re-looking at, having things dissolve, having things change in your second house, and now you can create a vision and an ideal and find inspiration that kind of, you know, edges you on to move towards that idea deal now that Neptune is direct. When we get to the sixth, we're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Capricorn. So starting to light up this Capricorn signature, okay? 
Mercury in Capricorn lights up the 12th house space for you. So things behind the scenes, the things that are hidden, our self undoing things and that's patterns, behaviors, all of our sabotage mechanisms that we have we're going to find in that 12th house. But it's also hidden creative talents that you've got specialized populations of people in your life. Do you have infants? Do you have elderly people? Do you have people who are a specialized populate, population in some way in your life and you are taking care of them or you're helping meet their needs in some way? Addictions, okay? Illnesses, all of these things live in the 12th house space, your spirituality. So as Mercury moves into Capricorn, your thought life what I'm thinking about, what I'm talking about, what I'm communicating, where I'm looking for patterns in my own life in a Capricornian way are about in a very material plane, but in a spiritual way. Where am I connecting? Where are you connecting, Aquarius? What are your ambitions? Right? What do you need to do to apply some, to some focus and some self-discipline? What decisions do you need to make in this 12th house space to help you be of success in this area? Or what long-term decisions are you making? You know, Are you having to make long-term care decisions for an elder person in your life or someone in your life? Are you having to do that? Are you having to make decisions and you feel like you have that level of maturity that's kind of creeped in so you're being a bit more cautious or reserved with actually just making that decision which I think is very wise. Now as we get to the 12th we're going to see Mercury enter into pre-retrograde shadow time at 8 degrees of Capricorn. So right here Aquarius I would really like you to grab your chart and be paying attention to what is happening at 8 degrees between 8 degrees and 24 degrees of Capricorn on your chart because this is the lesson set that you are going back over while this Mercury retrograde is going to be happening that will take us into 2023 and is speaking again to that signature that you came in with in the beginning of January. So just make some special note of that and you can absolutely look for Eight, between 8 and 24 degrees of Capricorn in your natal chart. I think it's equally as important to see it in your progressed chart if you are working with that. If you don't have a natal or a progressed or a solar return chart, any of these charts that may be quite influential to you, click in the description box down below, order a chart for me, go pull one from astro.com, but find out how this is working for you. That's what makes these readings really, really personal, okay? When we get to the seventh, we're going to have a full moon happening at 16 degrees of Gemini. Now, the full moon's going to ask us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. And this is still a lunar event, but it's a lunar event in an air sign in your fifth house. So expression, self-expression, which how funny it's Gemini year, and you got the expression mood, right? So what do you need to talk about, Aquarius, truly? What do you need to talk about with your children? Get some decisions to make with your children that are you're, you're having to have the, the serious talk with them, right? Where you're like, yes, you can live here, but it's going to cost some rent money now. You're like 27. You know, like what is the conversation you're having to have? Or what is the conversation that is kind of focused in emotionally that can relieve a little bit of pressure around what you need to say? What are you ready to take a risk to say? Are you being that most gorgeous storyteller to youth or young people or children in your life? You know, is there a Romance? Are you speaking romance, even emotionally, back into your life? Now, one of the things I want to point your attention to is that during this moon, we do have Mars retrograde in the energy of Gemini. So whatever you're speaking to or whatever you're trying to um, express, okay, whatever you're trying to bring out, I do want you to just be mindful of how you do it. Mars is our energy of doing, okay? So how you do it, you might, you might not just be able to launch something out there and have it be very well received, right? So think about what you're saying because information needs to be given and received. So if you're delivering it in a way that is just to cause a fight or just to cause a problem, you could do that pretty much any old way you'd like to. But if you're looking for an emotional... Um, shift of events, right? Or if you're looking to emotionally be heard and received, think about that because a retrograde Mars is better at going back than it is forcing something to move forward, okay? When we get to the ninth, we see Venus moving into the energy of Capricorn and Venus is an attracting energy. Remember, it's this. 
Venus is calling in. Venus is not rushing out to go get. Venus is calling in and calling to you. So in your 12th house space, where are you calling in harmony? Where are you calling in beauty behind the scenes? Where are you calling in a gorgeous rest, a gorgeous meditation, beautiful time in your spiritual land? Where are you calling in harmony between the you that you want to be and the you that you currently are? Where are you making some peace, bringing this to culmination in the 12th house? Other things I think of though, where are you making money on spiritual content? Or talking about things that are in a very specialized way. Where are you finding the value in research? You know, maybe you are a researcher. Maybe you would do a job where you work behind the scenes and we don't always know that you're there um, or you're hidden in some way. And you're able to also receive some compensa compensation. Now, Venus in the 12th house is still Venus. Romances partners can come back which in one sense how fantastic right if it's the right alignment it's the right time you're healthy people how wonderful that it can come back what a good thing now sometimes it can come back and you have to be very capricorn about it and you have to be like listen I, I this we're not on the right page here right because <laughs> capricorn is getting down to brass tacks we can either make this work in the material plane or we cannot these are does this work long-term kind of questions to whatever's coming back now other things that i've absolutely seen happening right here in the 12th house are affairs or things done in secret money spent in secret so these are very available options around us now whatever it is though whatever comes back for you remember that as an attracting in energy venus is solution oriented so whatever you want to take on in this 12th house energy of Capricorn, you can absolutely use it as an opportunity to rise above or to rise to that next place and know that there's long-term commitment and success attached to whatever you're taking on, okay? Now, as we get to the 20th, we're going to see Jupiter move into the energy of Aries. We saw Jupiter move into the energy of Aries May 10th of this year. So expansion in the third house. Who's in your network, what you think, what you know, the expansion of your mind, how you communicate, maybe something that you're buying or selling, contracts, um, huge expansion around things with siblings. I would absolutely be in this energy, but whatever it was, you're like initiating. This is Jupiter and Aries. You're initiating. You're going in a different, different direction. This is a new landscape for you in some way, and you're putting yourself out there to take on um the voyage so whatever that is we saw you start it in may and then there was like a retrograde back and now it's back into the energy of aries until may 17th of 2023 so go confidently in the direction of what you would like to begin and remember in aries Aries is, yes, the god of war. That is one archetype we carry here. We're just in there, confidence, taking on the challenges, failure be damned, you know, just all of that. But also, we have from the Roman perspective, looking at Aries as the sacred gardener. So where are you creating? Where are you getting into the roots and you're tending the garden of your life so that something beautiful can bloom? But you are the one tilling that land, okay? When we get to the 21st, happy solstice, whichever one you are celebrating, winter, summer, happy solstice. The sun moves into the energy of Capricorn. You are officially entering into your rest and renewal time of the 12th house. Okay, it's time for you to go to ground. It's time for you to look over this last year. And from birthday time last year until now, what did you achieve who have you become? What are you celebrating? What's come into your life? What's gone out? But furthermore, what do you want to bring into achievement to tangible form in your life? But you've got to bring some discipline. You've got to take on some order. You've got to get structured. you got to figure out what your ambitions are for this next stage of your development. And that might take some quiet time, being the hermit, you know, getting down there, getting pen and paper out, writing, talking to yourself, being with yourself, dancing it out, you know, having spiritual conversations with maybe your elders about what does it mean to come to the next level of life and new levels of maturity and the passage of time. Whatever it looks like for you please let me know in the comment section down below what are you doing to get pre prepared for birthday time as it comes next um next month 
So when we get to the 23rd, we've got the new moon now at one degree of Capricorn. So plant your seeds of intention for everything you'd like to begin and just to keep it good. <laughs> the 29th of this month, we're going to have Mercury take that retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So you'll have an opportunity to go back over the requests you have made, the things you want to bring in, and you'll get to review it, rethink it, re-edit it, reconvene, realign, uh, reconnect. Any of the re going back over words is where your mind is going to go and where your decision making process is going to happen, where conversations are going to show up and you're going to review this area and what a wonderful retrograde to have as we are leading into birthday time because you really have an opportunity to see yourself through Saturnian which is a little bit more serious. It is that 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 Kronos energy time, right? And you're also going to get to do that with Mercury, our planet of the mind. You're looking back at who you have become in this material form in this last year. So I hope you have a fantastic December, fantastic end of the year. Rest well before birthday time. If you haven't checked out your 2023 annual forecast, please make sure you do so. I'll make sure there's a link in the description box down below. I love you, Aquarius. Have a great month. Bye.